Brian, thank you for taking the time today. Happy to be here, Steve. You're a very long time United Way yep. affiliate person, yeah. committed to United Way for yeah. many years. Yeah. But now you take over as CEO and now you've led this company through a transformation. How did you recognize the need for a transformation? My sense was that you know we had forgotten how to create value. We really had forgotten uh, how you connect with donors as customers and how you put community interests and corporate interests together. Uh, because we were we were so focused on raising money in the workplace in in a monopoly position that uh, that I think we we kind of lost uh, north where north was again but a certain generation especially those of us raising money and interacting with donors I think we we just felt it intuitively that we needed a shift okay so you feel it intuitively mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean all the organization feels it intuitively. No, no, that's right, that's right. We have this big scandal at United Way of America in 1992. Uh, the CEO of United Way of America uh, goes to jail for, uh, for a number of years, and the organization as a movement goes adrift. Mm -hmm. and, and I say that to say that if, if, let's say that I or anyone would have come in and that hadn't happened, I think it would have been much more difficult to create dramatic change. How did you recognize the need to change the business model? It started with two things, that the conditions in which people were living, um, we had created, uh, we're creating 35,000 new nonprofits every year in the U.S., and yet if you look at education or financial stability or access to health care, the issues weren't getting better. If you look at our business model, folks are going around us or through us to get to their favorite uh, their favorite nonprofit, and so we had to go back and say, what value do we actually have? What do we bring? When we ask the American people, what do you value about United Way, they tell us you're not special interest oriented, that we like the fact that you focus on the common good. What we had to do was go from common good to what's the platform that creates opportunities for people to have a better life. And that's what got us focused on education, income, and health. Mm -hmm. and if you all go 100 years back, it was education, income, and health. And if you look at the UN Millennium Development Goals, it's education, income, and health. It's always education, income, and health. It's the environment that changes. So then we had that. And what was, for the first time in our history, then we got agreement among local United Ways to set goals in each one of them. You know, uh, cut in half the high school dropout rate in the U.S. Increase by two million the number of families that are financially stable. Increase by two million the number of young people who are leading healthy lives and, and avoiding risky behavior. So you go from vision around common good to a platform around education, income, and health to goals, to agreement now on strategies that allow you then to go to your partners, government, foundations, corporations, individuals, and connect them to those strategies. You have now an organization that at least is willing to change and said maybe there's a latent need for change or a latent. Right. You still have to actualize that. You still have to tap, reach down and get it yeah. and, and bring it to the surface. Yeah. So how, how did you think about doing that? Well, we started with, we started with mission and purpose. Um, and you know, I had the I had the opportunity to be part of a group of local United Ways uh, professionals and national volunteers working for a year before I came into the job. I didn't know I was going to come into the job, but we were working on kind of the environment in which we were working. The United Way was working, and what was true at the time was 1,400 United Ways across the U.S. One half thought they're in the fundraising business. One half thought they're in the community impact business, community change business. Mm -hmm. We're completely divided. My sense was that most everybody really wanted to get back to community and social change. And so the first thing we did was, was drive toward that mission and, and get agreement. And it came incredibly quickly, uh, convincing ourselves that we're in, the, we're in the business to change people's lives. And fundraising is a strategy. Everything else is a strategy. And so we got aligned around purpose was the first thing we did. Second thing we had to do was get our arms around our operations. We were too decentralized too much autonomy in local United Ways. We're having too many ethical issues and operating issues in local United Ways. So you inherited a team, you inherited a culture, both here in the corporate headquarters, but also with affiliates out yep. there. Yep. Um, it sounds like people were ready for change, but that doesn't always mean people have exactly the right mental map or the right tools, the right skills. That's right. How did you go about thinking about that, a creation of the team that would help you get the changes done? What was clear to me is that we needed people that were that, that both had United Way experience and didn't have United Way experience. So when we built our initial senior team at United Way of America at the time, uh, I started with myself and said, you know what, I've got a lot of United Way experience. 
I need folks around me uh, in key areas that I don't understand. And we got the right finance people. We got uh, community impact people in. Um, I recruited uh, a, a young a young guy at the time from Grand Rapids, Michigan, that was running the United Way there. He's now the CEO in Detroit and just tearing it up in Detroit. But the point is, I put together inside and outside. Transformation is a revolutionary idea, if it's truly transformative, a revolutionary idea that's executed over time. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's thinking about a big change wants it to go fast. Yes. And it doesn't go fast sometimes. Um, and talent is one of those things that if you want to if you want to win long term then you have to take a long term view of talent and culture uh, in order to build what you want you rally people around a new vision around community impact you change some fundamental operations in the business including accountability and governance you change the team immediately you put in place some longer term cultural changes yep and it works yep how do you sustain that? Because that works for the first two, three, five years. Now you're on year 10. How do you sustain the energy and the momentum yeah. on that over an extended period of time? Uh, the best corporate leaders I've ever seen um, understand that it happens on the ground. Value gets created on the ground. Mm -hmm. And the way you sustain value creation is making sure that you don't centralize things to a point that just suffocate innovation. You're sitting across the table from a new CEO. CEO of a nonprofit or a for-profit, can you distill, give us one lesson, two lessons, three lessons that you'd share? I would start by saying understand your environment. Uh, take the time to uh, know the organization's history, uh, to know the industry's history, know the, the national and global history as it relates to your organization. Um, be really open about what value you're currently creating and not creating. Um, because sometimes we get enamored with what we used to be and uh, and we get blind to what really isn't creating value any longer and what could create value going forward. Your field of vision has to be really wide and you have to be open to uh, the need to take risk and to be flexible and and adjust as you go because uh, it's not, you know, there aren't full stops anymore. Um, they're just they're just yield signs along the way occasionally. Brian, this is an amazing and wonderful story. Thank you for taking the time to share it with us. Thanks. Happy to do it, Steve.